Good morning. So, what is Ali Anna? Please, please. Oh. Okay, thank you. Bye.
Good morning, Dr. Rao. Dr. Rao, could you hear me? Hear me? Swasa sir, I hope that it is the time then we can go for start. Already right. attendees have joined. Right, Dr. And, uh, let's see, Dr. Good morning. Dr. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Rao, you are uh, okay. I can yes. see you now. <laughs> Your video is on. Say, uh, Dr. Rao, can you uh, go ahead? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Right. Can, you, can right. you hear me? But, yes, yes. Your okay, voice fine. is coming nicely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, participants, and Dr. Rao, and Professor Sivastav, and Mr. Uh, Ajit, and other panelists and dear participants and also namaskar so today is the second day for the online training program on disaster management and risk reduction and it is going on in collaboration with rani durgavati Vishwavidyalaya, jabbalpur madhya pradesh so this is the second day yesterday it was there for the inaugural session initially and where that uh, the vice chancellor honorable vice chancellor he was kind agreed to join and he has given his special address and before that the professor surya prakash of nidm he has put his keynote address during his keynote address he said very specifically how the nidm came into existence what are the role and since uh, 80 uh, since 89 that was in United Nations, in collaboration with Japan, they have declared that was a decade of international for disaster and risk reduction. So since that time, India government has taken the interest and later on this uh, uh, NIDM, they have taken the charge, they have made the nodal agency for that in the Ministry of Home Affairs. Earlier it was Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare. He has given the details on that and also present role of NIDM, how they are going on and what is their proactive work is going on in throughout India. And he highlighted that various stakeholders, uh, they are participating and we are organizing the training for them. And 
and due to the COVID pandemic, mostly it is you're going on this uh, online. But nowadays we are going to start shortly. And also yes, since yesterday it has started the face-to-face -face training also. After that, special address was given by Honorable Vishi. He talked that students, they are there, but they should get uh, knowledge for the disaster. Disasters are always there. And we should be aware that we should not make angry to the environment, to the nature. Rather, uh, if we are doing so, then definitely we, may, we should have faced the problem. And what is happening in the form of disaster is coming back. So he was proactive that uh, challenges can, can be taken by the students, youngsters, but we have to make them trained and education should be in such a way, syllabus should be adopted for that. So different uh, things he told how the disaster could be uh, managed by the young generation and other faculty member of the university. And after that, the technical session was started. That first speaker was Dr. P. V. N. Rao. He is an outstanding scientist and retired deputy director from NRSC. Though presently he is working there as a professor, Satish Dhawan professor in ISO, in the same place, NRSC Hyderabad. And he talked about the climate change impact on disaster and geospatial technologies. Dr. Rao said about the climate change phenomena vis a vis disaster is taking place in different area of India and globally also. Rightly, he expressed that after 1970, various disasters are in peak and slowly, slowly it is increasing and tremendous impact is falling on the uh, humans and other animals also. And also he narrated the role of geospatial technologies for the managing, mitigation, and various management and risk reduction for the various disasters. And thereafter, the second speaker, Dr. Uh, Mr. Anil Kathet, he is from NIDM. He talked in the topic of landslide. The topic was understanding the behavior of fragile slopes. He talked about the impacts of various landslides for different area, as well as Uttarakhand, recent and past. He explained the basic framework of risk mapping for potential damages. He also appraised the instrumental monitoring and early warning in precise way. There after, uh, one more speaker, third speaker was there, our beloved Mr. Ajit Batham from NIDM. He talked about the understanding, very important topic. He talk, uh, we should not undermine for the, uh, for the children. He talked how that understanding the risk in light of complaints in school safety and disaster effects on schools. Very precisely, very nicely he has explained, explained each and each and every pros and cons, how we should take care, how the, I mean, the parents should, uh, should act on that. And he explained about the hazard, vulnerability, exposures, and also he said about the school safety and why school safety is required. He expressed very nicely all kinds of safety partly to school he elaborated very very nice way and during that seminar on two and a half hours of course a little bit more time has been taken and in that seminar 124 number of participants were joined to the online activity now today we'll expect some more and obviously the participants are increasing slowly slowly now with this I'll uh, put in my recapitulation for yesterday. And then today, Dr. Uh, Professor Lokesh Sivastra will conduct the program and he will appraise about the today's activity of that. Now I hand over the stage to Professor Lokesh Sivastra. Yes, sir, please go ahead. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Haldar. In today's technical session, day-to-day -day program, we have the first uh, orator, scientist, uh, chief scientist of NGRI, Dr. N. Purna Chandra Rao. 
just before I invite him on the dais, I just wanted to introduce the audience. Just uh, here is a brief introduction of Dr. Purna Chandra Rao. Dr. Purna Chandra Rao is a well known scientist, seismographist, with over three decades of research experience having worked in India and abroad. Currently, he is working as a chief scientist and ACISR professor at CSIR National Geophysical Research Institute, NGRI, Hyderabad. A primary research lab, lab of the country where he has had and newly formed a group of environmental seismology. Earlier, he worked for three years as a director of National Center for Earth Sciences, Trebendam, under the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India, where he seeded several new research programs and activities. Dr. Purna Chandra Rao has done MSc Tech and a PhD degree in Geophysics from the Osmania University, Hyderabad, and also DSc degree in seismology from the University of Tokyo, Japan. Dr. Rao is specialized in seismo seismic wave from modeling the earthquake sources mechanism as well as for the earth internal structure. His current interests include environmental seismography, ambient uh, seismo noise topology, and reserve triggered seismicity. He was involved in the global seismo hazards assessment program in uh, of the Indian region and was principal investigator from the NGRI for the first seismo micro generation project of country of Jabalpur, Central uh, India. Dr. Rao has also worked intentionally on, on the seismo uh, tect tectonics of the Indian plates region based on the uh, focal mechanism and stress modeling studies. Dr. Rao has also uh, published about 100 of research papers in reputed general chapters book. It is on his credit. He also traveled widely uh, across the country. Uh, he traveled and studies uh, around 20 uh, countries for his studies as a visiting scientist. He has guided uh, about 12 PhD uh, awarded uh, under his uh, supervision and guidance. One of the student was from the abroad. He was from the Vietnam also. His latest work on seismo, uh, seismic monitoring and earlier warning with the reference to the uh, 2nd February uh, 2021 Uttarakhand disaster was recently published in two research papers in prestigious general. Dr. Rao was the first recipient of the ONGCA's best award when he was instituted in 19. Uh, 97. Later, he was uh, he was also working work, worked as a uh, visiting professor at the University of Tokyo, Japan, in uh, 2008, and uh, Raman Research Fellow at University of California, San Diego, uh, USA, in 2009. He is also he is also a recipient of the National Geoscience Award 2016 of the Ministry of Mines, Government of India. Later on, he has awarded so many awards uh, in, in his field. Uh, the number of lists are there. Uh, in the short time, we, uh, we are unable to read all the things, all the awards. And he was also editor of the uh, so many research general uh, of the repute. Uh, and he is still working in the field and continuously 
he is the editor of uh, so many journals of his own and uh, national level and uh, uh, international level now i welcome him and invite him to deliver his lecture professor uh, professor uh, pura chandra thank you thank you very much uh, dr srivastava for this uh, beautiful introduction and uh, thanks to dr haldar for uh, once again inviting me to this uh, forum i'm really indebted and uh, this is probably the third time i have come and i really enjoy uh, presenting and interacting with all of you so may i load my presentation yes yes please uh, please sir thank you and this is the very important topic that he is going to cover in this uh, jabalpur area that is micro seismic zonation fortunately yes. got him i you know though always he is busy but he is uh, uh, we got him today and very appropriate topic of uh, and the within the area of jabalpur what exactly. he was uh, done so he will narrate us right sir so my screen is visible because yes yes sir very much visible sir and uh, also i am able to go to the next slide the yes yes slide? Sure. yeah okay fine yes it is moving so yeah yeah so good morning uh, once again to all of you uh, today i'll be talking about a very important uh, subject uh, which is uh, the seismic hazard and microzonation in the jabalpur urban area now there are two important things uh, in this context the first one is that the, the first ever microzonation study in the country was done in jabalpur in case uh, some people may not be aware of this and uh, so therefore i feel this lecture would be special and also since we have our uh, dear colleagues from uh, coming from jabalpur so i'm sure it will be interesting to them the second important thing is that the 1997 jabalpur earthquake also is very special because most of the earthquakes in the intraplate are very shallow means 10 to 15 kilometers but this earthquake was very surprising because it occurred at 35 to 40 kilometers depth which is almost the almost base of the crust of the crust mantle boundary so therefore this uh, whole study becomes very interesting as i'll show you in the next few slides this study was supported by the department of science and technology and uh, the participation was uh, pan india because uh, we had uh, people from various organizations i was the pl from ngri and the coordination was from uh, gsi nagpur and we had uh, the cbri the central building research institute roorkee we had the scrc that is the structural engineering research center chennai and we also had the jabalpur engineering college which was helping in the uh, vulnerability studies so it's a it's a big program which was done in the 90s and uh, incidentally the first microzonation study of the in the country so let's uh, move forward now in this next slide you can see this is a tectonic map of the central india which is the narmada zone lineament uh, zone uh, which i'm sure all of you are aware of this so this is a major lineament running west to east and it's also found to be seismically active and uh, what is very interesting here is that two of the earthquakes one is the 1938 satpura earthquake which occurred on the western end of this uh, lineament which is called nsl and the jabalpur earthquake of 1997 which occurred in the middle or towards the east both of them have shown unusually deep location so satpura earthquake occurred at 40 kilometers depth the jabalpur earthquake occurred at 35 kilometers depth usually earthquakes in the intraplate region are very shallow so even in the himalaya you find earthquakes only at 5 to 10 or 15 kilometers not more than that only in subduction zones very uh, subduction plate boundary zones you get deeper earthquakes so this is a very unusual feature for a central indian tectonic lineament to be showing so anyway this clearly shows that there is a huge fault here which runs deep down up to the crust mantle boundary that is one thing and incidentally this is a, a, a rift rift valley zone 
or you can call it a paleo rift zone of the proterozoic and uh, now it is dead drift the faults are probably getting reactivated that is why you have so many earthquakes in the central india so this is the current understanding so in view of this the government of india decided that we need to do detailed studies to find out what is the micro hazard level in this region particularly jabalpur city which is uh, more populated uh, i would say so this project was initiated to do a micro level study of jabalpur now there is a difference between seismic hazard and seismic microzonation hazard is a general thing so which tells us uh, broadly what is the expected ground acceleration at any point at any in any region so it uh, it is just a simple geometrical calculation so you take an earthquake of a certain size and from a certain distance how much will be the impact effect of the earthquake in terms of ground shaking or ground acceleration so that's all that hazard talks about hazard does not include the various details like for example the site effects suppose the site is a hard rock the response will be different if the site is uh, filled with uh, sediments or alluvium then the response will be different so these all these things have to be taken into account and uh, similarly there is something called vulnerability which depends on the population the type of buildings and so on so the real risk for the city can be evaluated only if you do a micro level study and that's the reason why this study was taken up for jabalpur and before that let me quickly show you that how we use seismic waveform modeling which helps us not only to get the source mechanism so here in this case it is a thrust fault as you can see here but it also helps us to pinpoint the focal depth now you see in this plot on the left hand side you will find that the error in the waveform matching it drastically reduces when the correct depth is included okay so here you will see that around 35 kilometers the depth the matching is very good the waveform matching that means the observed seismogram and the synthesized seismogram they match very well when the depth is given accurately if you reduce the depth or if you increase the depth the error is increasing as you can see in this plot very beautifully it shows that waveform modeling helps us to pinpoint or to get the precise focal depth in seismology please remember earthquake location is easy but getting accurate focal depth is not so easy so we need to use such advanced techniques and with the help of such advanced techniques we could determine that the regions like jawalpur and satpura are anomalous in showing very deep earthquakes up to 35 or 40 km this is a new finding for the central indian zone so this is the deterministic hazard map for the nsl zone where you calculate the ground accelerations depending on the distance from the source and you will find that the maximum accelerations we find is of the level of 0.1 g which is not very high if you compare with uh, himalaya or andaman uh, the plate boundary zones but nevertheless it is considerable and we need to take uh, precautions accordingly now this is a very simple calculation of the hazard but doesn't tell much in terms of the vulnerability of the region so we'll see in this study which we have taken from uh, sponsored by dst you can see what all detailed studies we have done and how we could bring out the seismic risk zonation map of jabalpur city in the end now this is a seismic zonation map of india which is followed by everybody particularly when uh, some building construction has to be made or some major structure has to be made but uh, you will see that it's a very broad classification zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 like that in fact zone 1 is removed now only 2 3 4 5 depending on the level of seismic hazard that is expected so this is a very uh, pre, um, it's not a very detailed thing so we need to develop detail microzonation maps for each and every city that's very essential uh, in order to be prepared for any earthquake uh, 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 event in the future
So we started off with making the first level micro resolution map, which is broadly based on the lithology and geomorphological characteristics of the region. So we just divided into block one, block two, block three. So SB one, two, and three. This is based on the geology and the geomorph characteristics of this region. So you can see that SB1 is the northwestern part of Jabalpur, which is basically alluvial filled region. Uh, you have a thick pile of alluvium. And SB2 is a zone where you have a wide range of geological formations. Uh, like you have the Lameta formation with uh, lime, limestone or sandstone covers. You also have a, a weathered granite soil and volcanic sediments. And at, as in places, you have portions of exposed Deccan trap also. And uh, block three, if you see, it's mostly Deccan trap uh, exposure, exposed uh, regions. So in, based on these three characteristics, uh, we have made three blocks as a starting point. Now, from here, we got into a detailed studies to, to modify and to, uh, to upgrade the first level map to the second and higher levels. So these are all the studies that were carried out. Uh, I do not know whether the audience is familiar with uh, this technical, uh, this terminology, I hope so. So basically the tests we have done are, uh, for example, this standard penetration test, which gives the N values, which tells us the liquefaction susceptibility. You know, liquefaction is a property of the soil where it suddenly loses its uh, strength and behaves like a fluid. So in case of earthquake, the soil becomes loose and the buildings can actually sink. So that is liquefaction. And this test tells us the liquefaction potential of any region. So almost at 100 points in Jabalpur, we carried out uh, what is called the SPT test to get what are called N values. I'll show you in the next slide how the, that looks like. So based on N values, you can tell what is the liquefaction potential. Then we have done site response studies. So what is site response? I'll show you in the next slides, but basically it is the amplification of seismic waves because of the, uh, the low velocity formations. So only in hard rock side, you don't have any amplification, but otherwise uh, the seismic waves can be amplified and cause more damage. So this is dis determined using site response studies, which was also done at about 150 st locations. Then we did shear wave velocity studies by using what's called MASWA. It's also over 100 sites we have done this. And this clearly shows how the structure of the earth varies uh, from point to point in the Jabalpur area and uh, what it means. I'll show you some slides on that. And then generation of thematic maps which depict the liquefaction, the frequency of amplification in case of uh, uh, site, am site response and the nature of response and shear wave velocity and all that. And finally, we have integrated all these inputs with the first level map to form the basis for the second level seismic hazard and risk maps. So finally, the GIS based seismic hazard and risk information system of Jawalpur was finally it was prepared. Now this slide shows the N value distribution. So what is basically what it means is that the, we actually, it's, it's a kind of hit, hitting on the surface and the number of blows required to penetrate 30 centimeter of soil cover. That is how N value is defined. Okay. So we found that for more than 64% of the region, the N values are somewhere between 20 and 30. So that is the level of liquefaction that we can expect. Of course, you also have a softer material, you have harder material also, but the average, what we find is between 20 and 30. So that shows the level of liquefaction susceptibility. Now site response, what is site response? Very quickly, I'll try to explain that when you have a loose soil cover or you have alluvium or a soft sediment, in, a, in any region, then the seismic waves, when they enter this area, they get trapped in that layer and uh, they do a, what is called a resonance by multiply reflecting between the layers, the free surface layer and the base layer bordering the bedrock. 
so in between they will reflect several times and uh, that because of resonance they form an amplification at a station where it is recorded so because of this what happens is even if earthquake is small uh, the impact will be very large so it's a very important thing site response because small even a smaller earthquake can cause greater damage if we do not uh, take care okay so this is done using technique called nakamura technique and uh, we have also done it with some other techniques like spectral ratio method and so on to study what is the site response at the various points in jabalpur so almost uh, more than 100 points yeah you can see this is the uh, ma map of the jabalpur city and you can see this is the earthquake location of that 21st may 1997 earthquake which actually prompted all these studies and you can see the red dots they are all the locations where site response studies were carried out now how do we do the site response studies we deployed 10 short period and uh, strong motion seismic instruments for about two months so at each site we were doing about uh, three days three days of noise recording and this noise we, we have three components that means uh, north south east west and vertical three components and when you take the horizontal component by vertical component ratio then you get the amplification so that is how it is done this is a nakamura technique and uh, we have done this uh, this is done for the first time again and we and uh, this clearly shows at what frequency the amplification is likely to happen at any point see for example you see at this curve this is called the nakamura curve which shows frequency versus the amplitude or amplification so you will find that we have done this using different segments of noise recorded over a period of three days and you will find almost every segment shows the same response which means that it is very consistent and here you will see that at a frequency of about six hertz there is an amplification which is almost 11 times so which is a huge amplification except that the frequency is much higher so more like most of your multi-storied buildings and all they will be at a lower frequency so fortunately this is at a much higher frequency so it's not uh, that uh, dangerous in that sense but it's very important to know what are the predominant frequencies of ampl amplification in any place so this is uh, at a place called uh, i think uh, jal jaltara and this is another location kosam ghat where you find that at frequency of about 5.8 and 7.4 there is an amplification of 8.8 .8. so you can see the curves there is a dual peak here which means in this frequency range the amplification is again 8 8 times which is also very high so these studies clearly show that the site amplification is a significant aspect in jabalpur and therefore uh, construction of buildings should also be made by considering these frequencies so to avoid constructions which uh, coincide with the frequencies of amplification that's very important now this is another example which shows uh, how they can be complicated actually these curves can sometimes be very complex so here shows at frequency 9 hertz which is anyway very high frequency so it doesn't matter the amplification is about six times and one more thing i want to tell you that the amplification is not very well constrained using this technique which means that sometimes it can be over overestimated also all the frequencies are quite accurate the frequency of amplification can be determined accurately but the amplification sometimes is uh, overestimated so that's why this technique is not that reliable for amplification purpose although you get a rough idea you get a rough idea so it is important also to do modeling modeling where you actually do a forward computation to calculate how much the amplification is going to be so this was only based on background noise so i'll also show you how we can do modeling to get to this uh, this these amplification values anyway so these are the type of curves that we classified for the entire jabalpur region these are the different types and it's found that the curves are varying for different formations because jabalpur uh, has a complex uh, geology so uh, for each block 
you find uh, the curves are quite different actually. So this is all the, about the classification of the site response curves. And finally, we plotted uh, at all the hundred odd points. You can see the curves have been superposed, and this information was also used later on to calculate the seismic risk for the Jabalpur city. So this is the map which shows the peak amplification. The top one is the amplification map, means where you have more amplification, the red zones, for example, the red and the pink areas, where you have more amplification. And the lower plot shows the frequencies. That means at which frequencies you are likely to have amplification at that area. So these are all very useful inputs, particularly for uh, any civil engineering constructions to be taken up. The other important study is uh, the shear wave velocity study using what's called MASWA, which is multi-channel analysis of surface waves. So similar to the earthquake surface waves, this study is done at a local scale. So instead of earthquake here, we use a weight drop technique. That means a weight is dropped from a height and the impact creates elastic waves, which are then recorded by uh, seism seismic sensors along a profile. And the waves recorded by all these sensors are analyzed to determine the structure beneath. So usually we do it to up to a depth of 100 meters, not more, because it's all high frequency uh, content. So what this helps us is it gives us structures like this. Now you see in the bottom picture, so you can see that the basement here is something like about uh, 15 meters at the, at the depth of what? 15 meters. The red color thing is the basement in that area. I don't remember which sample this is. So similarly, you can see there are other areas. This is in Piparia. So you find that basement is again about 15 meters and you have the low velocity zone on the top, which can cause site amplification. We have also determined the uh, physical properties of these layers. This is another example. I think this is from uh, Kendri Vidyalaya GCF, where you can see the structure is very complex. So it's very difficult to predict uh, what kind of amplification can take place here. It's not very simple. So now next we wanted to study for each of these areas, how the seismic waves will behave in the event of an earthquake. So we uh, moved on to some modeling. I'll show you later on, but this is the shear wave velocity image of the Jabalpur city, how shear wave velocity changes from place to place. You can see here. And this map shows the bedrock depth image. So for example, you can see in the Northwestern side, the thickness is something like uh, 40 to 50 meters. So the, here you have the alluvial hill which makes uh, the top layer is very thick here. So thick layer means you will have site amplification at low frequency, lower frequencies. Okay, thin layer means the amplification will be at higher frequencies. And if the contrast between the top layer and the basement, if the uh, contrast in physical property is very high, then the amplification also will be very high. So this is how we understand the entire concept of site response. So next we have done a simulation using a hybrid method. So here what the purpose is that now that we have the structure of the different sections in Jabalpur based on the MASWA technique, what I showed you. So whether we can calculate, actually compute the seismic wave propagation and see how the waves amplify at different places. So this is called the response spectral ratio method. And uh, so in this study, these are of course the 1D models, uh, which were taken from previous studies, simple 1D velocity models of that region to start with the starting model. And then we took uh, several profiles. You can see over here, one, two, three, four, five, six profiles, uh, all emanating from the location of the 1997 earthquake to see along these lines, how the structures would vary and how the response would vary. So we took sections and did computation of seismic wave propagation. 
So you can see in this picture, these are the synthetic seismograms that we have generated for one of the profiles. You can see over here and also on the three components. At the bottom, you have the structure which was uh, taken uh, from the uh, Maswa. What we have done, the shear velocity studies, we got structure of the entire city. So that information we have used and we have propagated earthquake waves through this medium and generated these synthetic seismograms and calculated the response vectoral ratio. So you can see here, these contours, they show the, the amplification uh, values. Uh, some places you'll find it is 2.5, somewhere it is 3, and somewhere it is 1.5 and so on. So with this, we are able to calculate what will be site amplification at different places in Jabalpur along each profile. Now this is profile 4, which is one of the uh, profiles that I showed in the last picture. So, uh, okay, I think I'll skip this. Now, based on all these inputs, what I have shown so far, the surface wave, uh, the surface wave uh, studies, the site response studies and all these things. So, we come to a stage where we can upgrade to second level microzonation map. This uh, uses all the inputs, whatever I have shown so far. And based on that, we are able to classify the entire Jabalpur region into various hazard uh, levels. The different, so far, we are still not talking about vulnerability. So this is only an upgradation of our hazard map to second level. Okay. So this is how we did a detailed study to get to a second level map. Now the next step is to carry out the vulnerability studies. Uh, here we took the help from Jabalpur engineering college people and they have carried out uh, uh, various uh, surveys to estimate the vulnerability assessment for the whole city because seismic risk is equal to seismic hazard multiplied by vulnerability. So what we did, we have done seismic hazard in detail as you have seen so far. Vulnerability, I am not showing the slides, but this was carried out uh, locally by the JEC. And combining these two, we get what is called the seismic risk map of Jabalpur. So this one shows that what are the risk levels. So like you have high risk, moderate risk and low risk, three, three zones in the entire city. And this is based on inputs from both the detailed seismic hazard assessment and the vulnerability also. So this was the final uh, map that was prepared uh, for this city uh, based on this detailed uh, analysis. Yeah, so what are the important findings in this study? One thing is that thickness of soil cover and sand amplification are well correlated. That means we are getting high site amplification wherever the soil is very thick. And where you have basement rock, the hard rock, there the amplification is non not existing. That means it's equal to 1. The highest RSR values we have found are 4 to 6 in the northwestern Jabalpur, where you have a thick alluvial cover of up to 50 meters comparable to those we have obtained using Nakamura approach. So in the Gondwana formations, we have much lower amplifications of less than three in spite of thick sedimentary covers. The reason could be that the sedimentary cover, what we have, they may not, they may be consolidated or they may not be so soft or similar, it's not like the alluvium. So in that case, the amplification will be lesser. So even if it is sediment, if it is very hardened, then the amplification will be low. So the least or no amplifications are observed in the Mahakoshals, which are the oldest metamorphic rocks. And the predominant frequencies of amplification are in the range of 4 to 5 hertz for the Jabalpur city. And this forms an important result or input for civil engineering applications in future. So this work, uh, entire work was published in uh, two international journals. One is the GJI, Ge Geophysical Journal International, and the Journal of Physics and Chemistry of the Earth. So I'll show you. Yeah. So this, this, here you see those two papers. 
if anybody wants copies i can send the pdf so the first one where we demonstrated that the earthquake is deep lower crustal uh, the jabalpur earthquake so that appeared in gji the second one is the details of the microzonation study uh, this came in the journal of physics and chemistry of that as you can see here and this was a joint effort by various organizations it's not uh, just one individual or one institute so as you can see here we had ngri we had imd we had the cbri we had the gsi uh, in fact the gsi nagpur and gsi jabalpur also uh, coordinated uh, helped us in these uh, studies and this work was also brought out as a special publication in the, of the geological society of india in uh, 2012 so this copy is also available for sale uh, by gsi so if anybody is interested you can ask for a copy the title is seismic microzonation of jabalpur urban area and the authors are uh, myself and m ravikumar so this is a 70 page book which gives all the details of the seismic microzonation of uh, that was done for jabalpur and it's a matter of pride because this was the first microzonation study in the country see after this a lot of people have started doing since uh, early 2000 and now more than a dozen cities have been done already in india but all said and done this was the first step in this direction so i think uh, with that i come to the end uh, i don't know yes so thank you very much uh, for your patience and if there are any questions i'll be happy to take yes uh, let me see uh, rao sir please pardon uh, so far no question is there but i would like to know i would like to know from you in this forum that uh, you you were saying in jabalpur the depth is 35 km below that yes. was the focal point was there similarly yes. you have detected in satpura also it is in 40 km deep, uh, 40 km below now yes. how yes. what are the procedure to get the focal point point we know the seismograph and seismogram all the things are there but how we are getting the in in uh, in, in in a popular way or very simple way please say yeah. yeah so that our participants can enjoy the answer yeah yeah sure that's a good question uh, actually i had skipped that but uh, you see uh, normally the earthquake location is done only using the first phase that is the arrival time of p and arrival time of s wave so based on the arrival time at various stations the location is calculated okay so but what what we are doing we are taking the whole waveform we are matching the entire waveform not just the p wave and s wave so in this process what happens you know in seismogram there are what are called depth phases depth phases means those phases which are sensitive to depth okay in other words if the focal depth changes then these phases they will drastically change in the seismic record for example spn there is a phase called spn spn is a phase which uh, uh, is very sensitive to focal depth because it is a s converted to p and which travels faster after that and it occurs between p and s so depending on the spn uh, location on the seismogram you can accurately determine the depth so this something which uh, most people do not do they don't do this uh, because it's more tedious but if you want accurate depth then the spn phase is the best way especially at regional distances so we have done that when you are doing waveform modeling you are taking care of the depth phases and therefore your depth becomes very well constrained there is absolutely no doubt now that the jabalpur earthquake has occurred at 35 36 kilometers maybe plus minus you can put one or two kilometers not more so we are very confident because it was done based on waveform modeling and even satpur earthquake although it's an old earthquake people have digitized the seismograms the old analog seismograms were digitized and it was done there is a publication on that so i trust uh, these two only because they were done rigorously 
और जब सतपुरा एंड जबलपुर अदर अर्थवेक्स मे बी डीप बट वी डोंट नो तो हेलो हाँ आर यू एम आई ऑडिबल और नॉट यस सर यस सर वेरी वेल हाँ नहीं वहां तो ऑडिबल बोल रहे हैं साहब ओके 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 नहीं नहीं हल्दर साहब सेइंग ही इज नॉट एबल टू हियर मी नहीं नहीं आई एम हेरिंग यू सर हाँ ठीक है ठीक ओके सर वन थिंग आई वांटेड टू नो सर हाँ जी तो व्हाइल यू आर स्टडिंग दिस एरिया डेफिनेटली यू माइट हैव डन द इंटायर स्टडी ऑफ द अर्थ इंटीरियर स्टडी ऑफ द अर्थ जियोलॉजिकल स्टडी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलरली जोन एरिया तो इज देयर एनी स्टडी इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल उट Okay, okay. On this study, but since uh, they are uh, very bulky, uh, only I think limited copies were uh, published for that. But the one which I told you, the GSI publication, that is uh, a brief one or seventy pages, which is available from the GSI, the Geological Society of India. Okay, but uh, this detailed thing, I mean, it is hard to circulate. So, but we have that. I, I also have it. I think the geological uh, survey of India will have a copy of that definitely. Okay, that I wanted actually, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will get it, sir, somewhere. Sir, this was a very nice lecture, fantastic lecture, and this was totally scientific and thought-provoking. Sir, I have I have read a lot of studies regarding this earthquake in Jabalpur. and madhya pradesh council of science and technology has also done a lot of work in this regard and they have published a, a, a book a huge book on that also and yes. the, the things which you have told us that, that is also not available in that book also that is very good work sir i uh, congratulate you that the, your presentation and the, your lecture was very nice fantastic sir congratulations thank you, thank you very much very nice of you dr haldar Yes, we can. Uh, if you if you permit me, yes, so yes, I, I know uh, Dr. Rao uh, always he expressed yes. very well. But this time he has uh, uh, deliberated most of them in this modeling, calculation, this thing. But other than that, he talks very nicely. But except that modeling, he could not this thing no escape. <laughs> but but nicely has briefed that how the micro seismic zonation, micro zonation, uh, he has uh, developed in. Uh, it is our pride that he was a team leader from India. in collaborating all the agencies cimd and this gsi he has done the work and very good work he has done definitely it will be helpful for future study also so thank you thank you very much my okay thank you dr rao again we'll see each, yeah, each yeah. other in this forum okay now swastu ji we can go for the next lecture okay now after this very impressive and interesting lecture now i invite professor dr jyoti shrivasto she is professor of the chemistry in government science college she is with us i on behalf of my own and behalf of the organizing committee i welcome him welcome her she is with us she has joined uh, can you hear me madam Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I welcome you in this uh, three days training program organized by the NIDM and Department of Geography, Rani Durga Bhati University, Jabalpur. Uh, just uh, I introduce you, Dr. Jyoti Shivasto is a senior professor in. government science college jabalpur that is autonomous college and she has done mphil and phd from rani durgavati university jabalpur 
she she is the uh, professor of inorganic chemistry and she is teaching since 32 years and she has experience of research about 20 years or more her qualities in merit as we see that she has secured the positions in post graduation graduation and mphil and later on when she was appointed as an assistant professor in madhya pradesh public service commission she also secured the third position in all over india she was awarded the teacher fellowship by the ugc in 2004 she has published research paper uh, in a national and international repute 12 research paper and four books chapter four and uh, uh, so she has completed uh, uh, one uh, major research project and so many minor research projects under uh, her uh, guidance and supervision in spite of all she has expertise in uh, uh, other activities also she has she was the head of the department of chemistry in uh, government uh, arts and science college damo uh, she was also head of the uh, department of chemistry in government ofk college jabalpur she was uh, also in the various uh, so, uh, college activities and taken part in the nac in the committee, IQAC, and other uh, committees, and she is also resource person in uh, uh, academic staff college, uh, MHRD, uh, Rani Durgawati University, and uh, various places. She ever took part in number of uh, uh, conferences and workshops, and organized so many national and international conferences uh, at uh, their college. Uh, uh, now. I invite her to deliver her uh, lecture on that is uh, uh, her topic is industrial disaster and mitigations measure. This is the topic regarding the today's topic and I uh, request her very humbly kindly address her please. Dr. Jyoti Shivastu. Thank you sir so for your kind words of introduction. Uh, please allow me to share the screen. Dr. Haldar, please. Uh, it is shared already. Madam, it is shared. You can, you can upload. I hope uh, you should not face any problem. Yes, I am sharing share. the screen. Okay, please. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is coming. Yes, fully visible. It is in full form, nicely visible. Okay, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. As all of you know, that every living species on Earth influences its environment and in turn gets influenced by it. Nature always remains in a balanced state unless it is touched or disturbed. But what happens is scientific knowledge is day by day increasing and man started interfering with the environment. And ultimately he was able to modify, to suit, uh, modify the environment to suit its need and expectations, no doubt life started improving but after the scientific industrial revolution in the past what happened every year huge industrial installations were done advanced technologies were developed race of urbanization was developed that led to concrete jungle in fact and uh, in, uh, naturally it, we, uh, we led a modern comfortable life but these were what what was that the cost these were at the cost of uh, exploitation of natural resources and this exploitation of natural res resources what happened it has upset the balance of ecosystem as a whole it has balanced uh, it has created imbalance of nature and environment we failed 
ultimately we failed and we could not understand the repercussions even that was on its own our own existence and this imbalance what is that imbalance it was it could be natural and man made as well which have been taking the form of disasters long ago scientists climatologists environmentalists have alarmed against the modern man against these devastating impacts of natural environment and they have pleaded they have literally pleaded save life save earth that these are the slogans that every uh, where we we can see how uh, where in the environmental awareness campaign any others uh, now uh, the now all of us many uh, many awareness campaigns and we have uh, come to know uh, that these uh, things should be avoided or it should be prevented you have heard many influential lectures to, uh, till now of very eminent speakers on this platform and today we have heard rao sir also and he was talking about the jabalpur which which is the native place of mine today i will be speaking on industrial disasters and mitigation measures from this lecture what i will cover and what the participants will able to know about the industrial disasters and its various aspects and mitigation measures now we come what uh, to the main topic which i am covering today that is industrial disasters many of us and almost all of us know about industrial disaster because industries are the one that are always vulnerable to accidents in most cases they lead to disaster also causing uh, deaths of human beings animals and uh, ultimately what is happening they are damaging to the environment they are dam damaging our mother earth because what is uh, actually the disasters uh, uh, which are caused in industries industries uh, mainly do mainly production and manufacturing process that are uh, in the hands of what human hands and they are and the what mindset they are uh, working while handling the different steps of industrial production so naturally uh, risks and dangers are always there they are at every stage of industrial productions zyada tar kya hota hai hamari laparwahi ke karan hadse hote hain hum bahut baar we are not competent enough to handle the machineries to handle the equipments we are not employed for that work but we are doing that work हम जिस काम में कम नहीं जानते हैं वी टेक इट फॉर ग्रांटेड दैट वी विल डू दैट एटीट्यूड मैटर्स एक्चुअली एंड मोर एवर व्हाट हैपेंस हायर अथॉरिटीज आल्सो दे डोंट टेक केयर एंड टू सेव मनी टू सेव ह्यूमन लेबर दैट मींस दे डोंट हैव टू पे द वेजेस एक्सेट्रा दे व्हाट आई व्हाट दे नॉन टेक्निकल एक्सपर्ट्स दे उनको काम सौंप देते हैं Uh, the what work the engineer should do they are uh, done by the non skilled workers natija kya hota hai is tarah se hum aapdaon ko khud hi nimantran dete hain humans humne dekha ki humans are the we can say that is the sole creature which is responsible for industrial desert uh, disaster whether any position we are either we are in the government either we are in the authority level either we are employee or citizens in uh, what happens is what industrial disaster main cause because uh, it is the humans so uh, humans are only creating all type of uh, hazards uh, all type of uh, activities responsible for hazards and disasters infrastructure is laid down tender pass hua bill pass hua and uh, construction is uh, done and without knowing without uh, without ignoring they know the standard measures i should say but they ignore just to uh, create the company to to develop uh, uh, to get more money they ignore the standard measures kisi bhi industry ke bare mein hum baat kare to praya kya dekha jata hai what is uh, seen He, they don't have the storage capacity they don't have the uh, minimal uh, requirements also jitna production hota hai 
suppose it is uh, factories of hazard uh, making of hazard uh, it's employ it's using utilizing hazardous chemical so are they employing capacity measures uh, most of the cases uh, these are uh, lacking in the infrastructure uh, when uh, we talk of hazardous uh, chemicals naturally uh, some materials are there which are hazardous in itself only like we can say example we can see like pathogens that are used in microbiological laboratories hospitals pharmaceutical factories for drugs and vaccines atomic minerals that are used in nuclear reactors for generation of electricity explosive we can say that are used in fireworks unit they are, their nature is themselves uh, hazardous hota kya hai they hum jo bhi uh, employ karte hain and we are not following the safety guidelines also safety measures are not our uh, uh, adopted we over like them laparwahi karte hain mainly uh, where risk is more there are like chemical factories nuclear power plants petrochemical units distribution of mineral oil natural gas through pipes there if uh, suppose uh, there is mishandling in the, in these in the industries that could cause uh no, major uh, hazards in there what happens jo employees hote hain they are not wearing the gloves helmet nahi use karte mining mein ya unke jo safety equipments hain wo nahi use karte hain or fir uh, what is uh, i have already said about the mindset what mindset they are coming at the workplace that <laughs> much matters office ka tension hoga work load hoga family tensions honge kuch bhi hoga to what happens uh they are distracted from uh, their work and they are mishandling the machinery laparwahi mein kya hota hai kabhi valve khula reh jata hai to kabhi they are not able to uh, handle circuits galat ho gaya aise means we are uh, we can see many examples are there and uh, they are ultimately kya hota hai aap dam ko wo janm dete hain natural hazards they also are the causes of uh, industrial disaster i would say like tsunami waves waves and cyclones hurricanes tides and they are industry uh, what, uh, uh, what they are doing they are damaging industries of the coastal locations and nuclear power plants for example uh, uh, you might be knowing that the nuclear reactor meltdown occurred in fukushima fukushima japan 2011 and uh, the main reason was because of the strong tsunami which called came off in the sinrai japan so mainly we can see that people uh, are the responsible whether it could be of because of negligence because it could be of the carelessness because it uh, manual error or uh, machinery error these are the factors which are responsible to cause industrial disaster normally we see that uh, i have taken here uh, which industries are more prone to industrial disasters uh, defense associated industry uh, like uh, rao sir has uh, very well explained about uh, uh, the in the defense uh, uh, disasters in defense industries also and uh, earthquake prone uh, industries in jabalpur and uh, here you can see that ordnance uh, factory khamaria and many other industries are there jabalpur mein bahut sari defense factories hain ofk hai gcf hai vfj hai and uh, many hazards many accidents had occurred in fitting section and uh, mainly these uh, hazards were uh, occurred during the manufacturing process of bombs and uh, uh, other um, uh, ammunitions then comes the manufacturing of things you can see the slide here and uh, mining industry energy industry and chemical industry these industries i will cover uh, in the further slides now what are the uh, causes here yeah, what are the reasons how the uh, hazards are occurring how the disaster is occurring in defense associated industry if we see what happens in defense defense industries uh, there are storage buildings there and uh, m arms ammunitions and uh, gole barood ye sab rakhe jate hain what happens uh, ye jo rakh rakhav hota hai if uh, properly maintained nahi kiya if it is not maintained properly and uh, to durghatnaye jo hoti hain wo rakh rakhav ke dauran zyada tar ho jati hain uske alawa agar 
these industries because it is so vulnerable to hazards and disaster they have to be properly maintained maintenance is not proper if uh, a bad industry that is um, uh, that is established um, the authorities they are they don't uh, bother to for the maintenance procedures i should say and uh, uh, of standard procedures that should be followed they are not following so uh, as a uh, means we have seen any many examples like submarines uh, in aquatic uh, we can see that sub, uh, submarines when they are wo doob jate hain to kya hota hai jaise ye isme aap dekh sakte hain ki aquatic animals jo hain unke upar kya dushprabhav hota hai and uh, uh, jitne bhi animals hain jitne bhi aquatic uh, uh, usme aquamarine animals hain un sab ke upar bhi iska effect hota hai now comes the manufacturing we all know that the manufacturing units uh, require chemical electricity and uh, you know, also manpower uh, naturally manpower is required in every industry and mainly what happens in the manufacturing uh, industry if you see uh, in this slide how it uh, this uh, boy with he is uh, preparing the uh, fireworks with uh, bare hands He is not using any safety measures, and in the upper slide you can see uh, how the people are running. This this uh, picture is actually of the fire fact works factory explosion that took place in Sivakasi in 2012. And what happened in this uh, uh, explosion was that disaster was uh, by the explosion and blast in this fire fact uh, fireworks manufacturing unit. and mainly what what was the reason what was the reason? was very amazing mainly the reason was the carelessness of the workers and because they have not adopted any safety measures and blast was so huge that three concrete sheds of factory were flattened acha 38 were killed and uh, similarly uh, there are there are disasters can cause due to the building collapse because of the failure in infrastructural facilities naturally uh, this uh, manufacturing industry you can see this was the building collapse in dhaka next comes the next i will uh, discuss about the mining industry uh, mining you all know that uh, it can mean mining industry if we see the mines are both uh, tunnel and open pit type what happens in the tunnel the more uh, danger is in the tunnel one tunnel one you can see here the examples of uh, how the disaster is occurred in the mining industry uh, tunnel mein kya bhay rehta hai pani bhar ja floods aa gaye earthquake ho gaya uh, so what happens uh, pani bhar jayega or suppose the mine collapsed then what happened and there are elevators there are lifts in the mines Uh, so there is a possibility of the lift uh, breaking of lift lift and when these uh, uh, hazards occur what happens in mainly in these cases because they are tunnel shaped so what will happen the humans are not uh, the the uh, workers uh, which are employed there they are not able to come out and uh, because the in uh, mining ke dauran bahut sare means diamond mines hain coal mines hain many chemical gases are created so what happens they are uh, they uh, they are not able to come out so th uh, there will be suffocation and many deaths are found to occur due to suffocation in mines and uh, in open pit we can see that uh, lad, uh, normally landslides uh, are the main reasons for the disaster famous disaster we can see that uh, what was the, that occurred in turkey soma mine disaster what happened here it was explosion occurs and that was below the surface uh, with which was we started with a fire and what what uh, actually uh, the result was what that elevator mine stopped working when elevator mine uh, elevator in the mine uh, that stopped working so many miners were there during that uh, 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 during the, uh, the time where the, when the disaster occurred and so uh, they died of uh, co poisoning also and many died during the disaster and after effects were also uh, well seen and which is uh, very uh, touching to see these disasters how the human lives are affected in the energy this energy disasters that is uh, mostly occurring in power generating energy 
what happens we are uh, creating nuclear energy in the nuclear reactors we are employing modern equipments but what happens whenever the this type of uh, in, uh, incidents occurs whenever there is damage occurs whenever there is hazard occurs what happens uh, the radi radiations that is very um, uh, that is very explosive radiation man uh, poisonous radiations so wo nikalte hain so naturally what will happen it is uh, no doubt it is dis uh, destructing the environment it is uh, uh, polluting the environment we should say or pure manav jati ka isse nuksan hota hai uh, and um, in uh, aquatic uh, things we have seen here uh, like uh, when the uh, submarine so that oil spills off and uh, Uh, because if uh, it, it it explodes the oil what is split down and uh, that is also damaging the aquatic animals and um, uh, aquatic animals and uh, naturally the whole uh, uh, aquatic atmosphere also who who does not know about the chernobyl disaster which took place in U ukraine and that uh, that was the most kehna chahiye bahut bhayavah incidents tha wo what happened here was the these uh, at chernobyl in ukraine uh, the nuclear reactor power plant say nuclear radiation generate what this nuclear reactors and uh, uh, nuclear disaster was because of the uh, melt of the nuclear reactors and uh, what happened steam explosion was fire catch go and so they uh, released radioactive substances into the atmosphere and these leaked radiations were uh, they have damaged uh, to the uh, they cause severe damage acute radiation syndrome hua cancer another uh, many other diseases occurred or jo uh, river the lakes the they got contaminated with uh, these radioactivity substance again uh, the major reason was behind this disaster was what the duty workers uh, uh, duty workers which were employed there they neglected the safety measures they uh, mishandled means they they operating errors occurred another incident we, we uh, uh, that is very famous also that is three mile island incident uh, accident also that was all in pennsylvania that was also due to the partial meltdown of uh, nuclear reactor now to basically because i belong to the chemistry subject uh, so i am more interested to emphasize on chemical industry uh, chemical industry uh, again jo jitne bhi industries humne abhi tak dekhe and we had seen the causes of uh, disaster mainly what happens that was due to human uh, negligence uh, uh, human carelessness or uh, safety procedures are not ever uh, uh, applied and they are not human uh, they are not uh, competent even to uh, to handle the machinery suppose koi chemical plant hai humne wahan pe uh, jo chemistry ke basic cheeze nahi janta hai uh, ki acid ko kaise use karna hai ya other uh, jo chemicals hote hain unko hazardous jo chemicals hain they don't know the know about uh, what hazard they can क्रिएट और वॉट डैमेज दे कैन डू ऐसे लोग अगर आ गए प्लांट अथॉरिटीज ने तो उन्हें एम्प्लॉय कर दिया दे डोंट दे डोंट बॉर्डर ऑल्सो और उन लोगों ने किया उन्होंने बहुत सारे एक कहना चाहिए एक सिंपल से एग्जाम्पल मैं देखती हूँ कि एसिड को पानी में मिलाना चाहिए कि पानी को एसिड में मिला मेनी ऑफ देम डोंट नो वेदर टू एसिड को पहले डालें कि पानी को बाद में डालें मीन्स द मिक्सर मिक्सर वॉट प्रपोर्शन दे आर टू बी मिक्स एंड वॉट वॉट इज टू बी एडेड इन how many amount and when and what temperature when uh, 200 degrees likha hai 200 degrees was the standard uh, supposed temperature and they have uh, taken it to 500 high temperature so naturally what will happen uh, error will uh, human error hoga to lekin what uh, unke personal uske karan they are causing so much human life destruction as well as environment the uh, आप सभी जानते होंगे वर्ल्ड्स वर्स्ट इंडस्ट्रियल डिजास्टर कौन सा था वर्ल्ड्स वर्स्ट इंडस्ट्रियल था भोपाल गैस ट्रेजिडी एंड इट वॉक इन नाइनटीन एटी फोर भोपाल गैस ट्रेजिडी एंड दिस आई हैव टेकन फ्यू 
case uh, case study i could say that uh, whatever the what are the details which occurred in bhopal during the bhopal gas tragedy uh, the company which was responsible for this was union carbide india limited and uh, it was manufacturing pesticides and the main chemical that was responsible for this tragedy uh, everyone knows from that us tragedy ki bhayavata aaj tak bhopal ke vasiyon mein pure duniya ke लोग आज भी उसकी भयावता को महसूस करते हैं और प्रार्थना करते हैं कि कभी इस तरह के हाथ से भविष्य में ना एंड द रीजन वाज व्हाट हैपन बिकॉज द स्टोरेज टैंक विच इन विच वाज कंटेनिंग द मिथाइल आइजोसाइनेट गैस लीक्ड द एंड सो मेनी डेथ्स कितना उसका uh, मतलब क्लेम हुआ कितने उससे कहीं अधिक इंजरीज भी हुई कितने अधिक उसमें लोगों को क्या क्या फेस करना पड़ा और आ, ऐसा नहीं है कि भोपाल ग्रेस ट्रेजिडी जो है दैट ऑकर्ड इन 1984 बट इट्स आफ्टर इफेक्ट्स आर सीन टिल टुडे एंड आई डोंट नो इन फ्यूचर आल्सो फ्रॉम टिल हाउ मेनी डेज दिस इज द लोकेशन मैप यू कैन सी Uh, how much uh, from a union carbide plant is there and it is close to railway station hospital uh, uh, where it is situated this is slide shows now uh, let us see the chemical reaction what uh, what this plant actually took uh, was preparing uh, as as, uh, as you all know that uh, this uh, chemical plant was manufacturing pesticides what, which pesticide that was carbaryl so uh, firstly uh, how the reaction take place uh, reaction take place uh, with uh, the uh, uh, your, your, uh, the reaction was uh, methyl amine was treated with phosgene phosgene is a gas also and uh, this gave rise to a chemical this is gas methyl isocyanate cs3nco and this when reacted with one naphthol uh, in chemical terms we also say alpha naphthol so when methyl isocyanate reacts with alpha naphthol it is giving carbaryl carbaryl this pest pesticide was actually manufactured there and uh, this pesticides uh, uh, in this pest they are they were using very uh, you, you can say that is very dangerous process they they were employing Uh, other methods other measures could be employed to manufacture carbaryl it was not necessary that methyl uh, that was that was also uh, objectionable and it should it should have been uh, corrected we can we could have uh, employed this uh, simple procedure to pre uh, prepare carbaryl now this is uh, you can see the uh, what were the uh, employed things uh, during the preparation of carbaryl and where actually occurred the uh, major miss this mishap what happened and mainly the reasons behind that so you can see here uh, went gas scrubber is there flare tower is there this is designed to burn off the gas and uh, vent gas scrubber was uh, uh, employed for detoxification there are mic storage tanks uh, 40 tons in e610 3 tons uh, in 3 year uh, there e611 and e619 and to uh, because uh, because of pressure there uh, there was a refrigeration system also to cool the mic also what happened because uh, methyl isocyanate is extremely reactive and uh, extremely reactive uh, during that time the we can say that that what that occurred was during the night of 2nd and 3rd uh, december 84 e60 e610 tank e610 tank uh, which contained the mic here e610 containing mic that leaked actually uh because uh, i will uh, mention uh, the features uh, what what are the gaps yeah what are the lacunas which occur due to because of this leakage so what happened here you can see the water curtain is also there so water also water entered this e sextant tank water jab enter hua kahan pe jahan pe ki mic storage tank jo tha jo sik e610 wala tha us wo leak kiya to water uske sath ja ke mix ho gaya when water and mic uh, they are mixed what is happening an exothermic reaction occurs 
एंड बिकॉज एक्सोथर्मिक रिएक्शन क्या होता है वन इज एक्सोथर्मिक रिएक्शन वन इज एंडोथर्मिक एक्सोथर्मिक मीन्स हीट विल बी एक्सोथर्मिक रिएक्शन से हीट प्रोड्यूस होती है दे आर प्रोड्यूसिंग अ लॉट ऑफ हीट तो हीट ज्यादा होगा तो नेचुरली क्या हुआ प्रेशर ज्यादा हो गया ये जो वेल्व्स लगे हैं ये यहाँ पे वेल्व्स लगे हैं आप देख रहे हैं स्टोरेज टैंक्स में तो उसके प्रेशर के कारण वेल्व जो है वो खुल गया विद द इंक्रीज इन प्रेशर एंड इट इज प्रेज्यूम्ड दैट बिटवीन ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी टर्न ऑफ एम आई सी वेर रिलीज इन टू द एटमोसफियर ड्यूरिंग दैट वन आवर दैट लीक टुक प्लेस अब बिकॉज अब और जो चीजें क्या हुई अब ये जब लीक हो गया तो नेचुरली इट इज सो पॉइजनस तो वो तुरंत वो स्प्रेड हो गया एटमोसफियर में वॉट आर द मेजर लैक्यूनाज वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग बिकॉज दिस क्रबर जो है दो जो डिटॉक्सीफिकेशन के लिए लगाया जाता था वो स्क्रबर जो है वो टर्न था मेनली क्या होता है हम मेंटेनेंस करते हैं फैक्ट्रीज में क्या होता है अथॉरिटीज हाँ ये चीज मेंटेनेंस पे डाल दी दे आर डूइंग द मेंटेनेंस बट मेंटेनेंस जो है दैट शुड बी डन इन वन मींस आइदर ऑल द यूनिट शुड बी स्टॉप या जहां से उसकी भयावता होने की संभावना हो उसको कवर किया जाए सो दिस पाइप जो कनेक्टिंग पाइप था दैट वॉज रिमूव so that uh, gas should could not be burn off और जो एम आई सी जो हीट होके गैस जो रेफ्रिजरेट किया जाता था फ्री फ्री ऑन सिस्टम में दैट वॉज शट डाउन वाई इट वॉज शट डाउन बिकॉज नो वन केयर फॉर दैट क्यों इतना पैसा बर्बाद करें देर taking free on to other uh, the depositing there to other plants also they were delivering there and moreover जो स्टोरेज की जो कैपेसिटी होती है वो तो हर एक कोई भी चीज हो चाहे यहाँ तो एम आई सी टैंक्स की बात हुई एम आई सी टैंक्स की बात है तो देर विल बी अ स्टोरेज ऑफ केमिस्ट्री बट इफ इट इज बियॉन्ड द रिकमेंडेड लेवल्स दैट इज दैट इज गोइंग टू कैस डैमेज एंड यू कैन सी यर नो मेंटेनेंस वॉज डन मेंटेनेंस के नाम पे सब बंद कर दिया जाता है एंड दे डोंट केयर द गैस वाई टू वाई टू स्टार्ट द यूनिट वेन मेंटेनेंस इज ऑकरिंग and several safety safety systems you can see here including mic tank refrigeration and agar ye safety systems they have been employed so they could have mitigated disaster severity jo itni hui bhopal gas tragedy mein wo nahi ho and jo skilled workers जो हैं अब उन्हें पता ही नहीं होगा कि रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम का क्या यूज है दे डोंट नो व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ स्क्रबर दे डोंट नो द यूज ऑफ लेयर टावर सो दिस स्किल्ड वर्कर्स की लैकिंग भी जो है दैट वाज रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड दे ये भी पता चला है कि जो एमआईसी टैंक अलार्म्स थे दे वर नॉट वर्किंग फॉर फोर ईयर्स और आउट ऑफ सर्विस थे फ्लैट टावर और ये सो so, जो भी एम्प्लॉयड uh, होती है पूरी मशीनरी दे शुड बी वेल मेंटेन्ड इफ वी वांट टू मिटिगेट इफ वी वांट टू व्हाई टू मिटिगेट व्हाई टू कम व्हाई टू लेसन द डिजास्टर वी हैव टू वी हैव टू प्रिवेंट द डिजास्टर दैट इज द दैट शुड बी द मेन मोटिव सो एंड दिस भोपाल गैस ट्रेजडी as you can see because of uh, so many uh, uh, means we can say that uh, government was also responsible uh, the union carbide limited the authorities were responsible and uh, they have not employed the skilled workers because jo uh, hazardous tha jo effect tha that was so much uh, because uh, that means we can say every type of disorder the people were facing and they were facing and uh, they faced and they are now facing till now and naturally because of these gases uh, the atmosphere also got uh, polluted when atmosphere is there naturally the water air food every pollution every type of things uh, every type of uh, hum, uh, natural things will be uh, polluted and because of the uh, exposure to chemicals इतने लाखों लोग मींस जो आपने मैंने पहले की स्लाइड में दिखाया कि उन पूरा ऐसा लगता था कि जैसे मासिव क्रिमेशन हो रहा हो पूरे उसमें यू कैन सी इन दिस स्लाइड आल्सो यू सी हाउ द क्रिमे फॉर क्रिमेशंस डेथ ट्रॉल वाज सो मच 
सो डेट रॉल नेचुरली दीज गैसेज या जो भी डिजास्टर्स है नेचुरल नॉट ओनली डिजास्टर्स दे कैन बी एक्सप्लोजन दे आर कॉजिंग डिसबिलिटी एंड दिस डिसबिलिटी दैट कंटिन्यूज टिल डेथ एंड बिकॉज ऑफ मेनी गैसेज ऑल्सो द डिजीजेज विच आर स्प्रेडिंग और सबसे ज्यादा जो स्ट्रेस होता है जो मतलब हादसे के कारण जो हमारे अंदर एक वो बैठ जाता है डर बैठ जाता है जो दे आर लीडिंग टू मेनी मेंटल प्रॉब्लम्स और जब डिजास्टर होता है बहुत उसमें फैला रहता है पूरे मतलब कहाँ कहाँ तक पूरा कभी कभी तो पूरा पूरा शहर तबाह हो जाता है सो पीपल जो होते हैं दे आर स्ट्राइविंग फॉर फूड लैक ऑफ मनी इज देयर नो नो रिलीफ फंड्स होते हैं लेकिन रिलीफ फंड्स होने के बाद समय लगता है वो सब चीजें and uh, because uh, of these uh, disasters they are naturally causing the disaster see here how the all uh, they are barren pure uh, ped paude sab unke uske explosion ho ya chemicals ka gas ka leak ho any things uh, they are uh, in fact because it is related to nature they are ca causing the damage to environment these are the uh, it's not it was not possible to take uh, uh, all the disasters in this lecture i have uh, taken major in the last dec decade here these are the recent past i have written here notable industrial disasters in india in the recent past because होता क्या है बहुत से बहुत ज्यादा इंडस्ट्रियल डिजास्टर व्हेन इट इज कॉजिंग मैसिव इफेक्ट इंपैक्ट ऑन ह्यूमन एंड एनवायरनमेंट दैट गेट्स द मीडिया कवरेज बट जो डिजास्टर होते हैं आइदर सिक्स लाइव्स आर आल्सो देयर वो भी तो भाई अगर एक की भी जान जाएगी तो नेचुरली दैट इज अल्टीमेटली कॉजिंग डैमेज टू द ह्यूमन लाइफ और एनवायरमेंट सो मेनी ऑफ अस डोंट नो this type of industrial disasters uh, which are which took place in the recent past uh, some of them i would like to mention here ramki ctp solvents that was in uh, wiser uh, here what happened jo uh, chemical farmer jo ye building thi isme pehle fire hua massive fire kaise hua kyunki chemical factory thi केमिकल के कारण एक्सप्लोजन हुआ एंड दैट टर्न इन टू अव फायर एंड यू कैन सी इन द फिगर ऑल्सो दिस जो पूरी जो धुआं और गैस जो होती है वो दैट दैट वॉज विजिबल अक्रॉस द सिटी एंड द रीजन स्टिल इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज गोइंग ऑन नेक्स्ट इज नियरवेली एन एस सी लिग्नाइट कॉर्पोरेशन तमिलनाडु here what here what happened because of the explosion of boiler and this mishap jyada tar humne mishaps jo dekhe hain wo matlab if we see the statistics either it is in the late night or it is in the in the early morning और जो लोग होते हैं जो पीपल होते हैं दे उनको समझने का मौका ही नहीं मिल पाता और दैट इज वाई द डेथ रेट्स एंड द इंजरीज हैव आर बीइंग इंक्रीज्ड this is the mahova stone by mine explosion and uh, this occurred in the mining uh, mines in karbai kabra area of mp and uh, that occurs uh, that uh, mainly accident took place bahut sare jo laborers the when a dozen of laborers jo hain they were laying out gunpowder gunpowder itself is very explosive and ed and uh, wo क्यों यूज कर रहे थे बिकॉज माइन में जब स्टोन्स को ब्लास्ट किया जाता है तो इन चीजों की मदद से उसको ब्लास्ट किया जाता है सो वॉट हैपन द लाइटनिंग जो था वो स्टक किया एक्सप्लोजिव को एंड दे कॉस्ट पावरफुल एक्सप्लोजन दिस इज द ऑयल इंडिया लिमिटेड लिमिटेड इन आसाम फैक्ट्री दिस इज वॉज एंड हियर द गैस लीक Uh, occurred and uh, many families were affected because of this of the gas leak here yashasvi rasayan boiler explosion dahej gujarat here uh, because, uh, because here again the uh, um, uh, explosion was occurring because in the blast in the boiler this was also a chemical factory mainly we can see that uh, chemical factory disasters uh, they are uh, more uh, massive uh, in uh, to human life and environment as well uh, in the boiler chemical factory and uh, at that time um, senior leaders they took cognizance 
ऐसा नहीं है कि गवर्नमेंट ने या जो हमारे जो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज हैं बट एक्चुअली व्हाट हैपेंस इज व्हाट डिजास्टर जो हो जाता है उसका जो कहना चाहिए पॉलिटिकल फैक्टर जो होता है दैट बिकम्स एक्टिव सो दे आर नॉट एबल टू दे आर नॉट इराडिकेटिंग द रूट कॉज दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू या ठीक है रिलीफ फंड दे दिया ये दे दिया बट uh, जितना पढ़ लिया जितना मालूम हो गया बस उतना दे आर बट दे कंसोल द फैमिलीज एंड दैट एंड आई थिंक दे थिंक दैट देर ड्यूटी इज फिनिस्ड बट वॉट हैपन्स दीज फैक्ट्री शुड अंडर गो सेफ्टी ऑडिट सेफ्टी ऑडिट में अगर इफ दे आर अंडर गोइंग द सेफ्टी ऑडिट देन डिजास्टर्स कुड बी मिनिमाइज टू many extent this was the lg polymer gas leak vishakhapatnam ek is lg polymer gas leak jab hua tha to aisa laga tha ki uh, means uh, this also occurred in during the uh, morning time aur us time aisa laga tha matlab hamare pure india mein bharat varsh mein we felt as if aisa to nahi ki bhopal gas tragedy ka phir se वो उसी तरह की भयावता ना हमें देखने मिले क्योंकि जो इसमें जो गैस लीक हुई थी दैट वॉज स्टाइरिन एंड दैट इज दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी पॉइजनस स्टाइरिन स्टाइरिन गैस लीक के कारण जो वेपर क्लाउड है ये देखिए आप उसमें देख भी रहा है कि पूरे क्लाउड जो है पूरे मतलब सिटी में वाइजैक जो है उसमें पूरे उसमें फैल गया था एंड उसके कारण ये था कि जो रिपरकशन मेजर्स जो मतलब कि ना हो पाए वो जो मेजर्स अडॉप्ट किए गए थे दैट वाज वेरी क्विक बाय द सिटी एंड उसके कारण जो इंसिडेंस जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा डैमेज एनवायरमेंट डैमेज ह्यूमन लाइफ को नहीं कर पाया बट इफ द मेजर्स वे नॉट एडॉप्टेड दिस वुड हैव बीन कंपेरेबल टू भोपाल गैस ट्रेस्ट दिस वाज द शक्ति पेपर मिल गैस लीक हियर आल्सो दे वर क्लीनिंग द रिसाइकलिंग चेंबर्स they were then uh, admitted to hospital that was because of the poisonous gas so these are the some of the disasters uh, which i have mentioned here actually mitti ke naturally jab disaster ki baat hoti hai jab ho jati hai cheez then we are employing what should have been done jo beet gaya usse sabak nahi lete hain that was uh, that is uh, uh, the problem we are facing today and uh, if we define miti uh, fema has defined mitigation as effort to reduce loss of life and property by lessening the impact of disease mitigation actually matlab hoga ki you are lessening lessening the impact but uh, what is the need of lessening the impact we should eradicate we should uh, prevent it we should uh, not allow to happen such disasters uske liye sabse zyada zaruri kya hota hai that uh, uh, humne abhi baat kari ki jo just suppose uh, jo hazardous chemicals hote hain storage facilities hoti hain jahan pe storage kiya jata hai there is a rule also manufacture storage import of hazardous chemicals rules in 1989 there is an environment protection act 19 and very many years other environmental laws are there that should be strictly followed agar nahi follow karti hai industries ya factories they should be shut down government should take strict action against them and naturally uh, jab hum kuch uh, employees jo hote hain wo to hum baat ki baat hai uh, aage main slide mein bataungi but uh, like our uh, students like our college students they should also feel the duty like uh, ncc nss scouts they should be trained properly wherever it is required uh, they should be trained uh, how to mitigate the disaster how to aur uska kya usko kis tarah se hum response usko kis tarike se hum safeguard kar sake human life ko they should be well trained ab baat ye aati hai ki jab bhi disaster hota hai गवर्नमेंट जो है फंड एलोकेट कर देगी कि इतना इतनी फैमिलीज को डिस्ट्रक्शन हुआ इतनी ह्यूमन लाइफ हुआ उनको इतना पांच लाख का मुआवजा दिया ये दिया वो दिया बट इतना मनी देने की देने पर मीन्स डिजास्टर होने के बाद तब जब 
हो गया हादसा उसके बाद हम चेतें वी आर मतलब उसके बाद हम सोचें कि इसको हमने गवर्नमेंट से ठीक है वी हैव गिवन बट ह्यूमन लाइफ का कोई मुआवजा होता है क्या ह्यूमन लाइफ का तो कोई मुआवजा नहीं होता तो उसके बदले में हम क्या करें पहले से हम वो जो पैसा व्हाट वी आर स्पेंडिंग ऑन द रिलीफ आफ्टर डिजास्टर वी स्पेंड द रिलीफ ऑन द प्रिपरेशन एंड टू मिटिगेशन मेजर्स इज आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज वॉट इंडस्ट्रियल सेफ्टी इज the most most mitigation measure that should be followed jo bhi workers hain machine operators hain wo un sab ko they should be and they should know the safety principles and they should follow the safety rules guidelines they should follow and uh, as i have already mentioned uh, they should undergo the safety audit also how can we industrial safety can be planned in industries they should uh, these are some of the measures that we can the industrial safety can be planned in industries because bahut jagah hum dekhte hain jaise khaskar mines aur ye sab mein there is not proper lighting also alarms nahi hoga to kya hota hai lighting nahi hota hai us dauran bhi bahut baar hadse ho jate hain they are not uh, wearing the sensors or gear safety uh, tools jo hote hain wo nahi karte hain pathways nahi bane hote hain kuch aise signals hone chahiye there there should be sign boards and uh, uh, whatever there say chemicals वगैरह होते हैं what is happening uh, suppose in the floor chemical is spill there and uh, uh, so uh, chem, uh, some uh, some other worker he he could uh, uh, get contact with that chemical also तो वहाँ पे मतलब जो dryness होना चाहिए पूरा means cleanliness hygiene should be maintained in the uh, industries proper layout should be there so my uh, Uh, i should say to the students whatever the uh, who are participating here the best code for which goes with the industrial disaster is prevention is better than cure ki hum baad mein soche if uh, we are uh, curing after the mishap has occurred why to wait for cure we should prevent so that such mishaps does not occur and Uh, naturally main duty as an individual is what what is the main duty as an individual we should uh, work we should have clear environment why not we hamari uh, hamara to hame to adhikar hai ki we should have uh, our future generations ko hum safe environment de pae there is betterment of man can actually this if we follow these guidelines we, we follow the safety guidelines safety measures adopt karenge so uh, industrial disasters could be avoided and will be able to protect the mother earth thank you so much श्रीवास्तव आप इसको विड्रा कर लीजिए यस इट वाज अ वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन डॉक्टर ज्योति श्रीवास्तव एंड व्हाट आई से यू हैव क्लियर ईच एंड एवरीथिंग रिगार्डिंग योर प्रेजेंटेशन इंडस्ट्रियल डिजास्टर मिटिगेशन योर प्रेजेंटेशन वाज इन थ्री पार्ट इंडस्ट्रियल डिजास्टर एंड सेकेंड वाज मिटिगेशन एंड शी हैज ऑल्सो टेकन Uh, few uh, case studies regarding the industrial disaster that was the very important uh, case it was the bhopal gas tragedy uh, that is a well known tragedy uh, happened in uh, bhopal and she, she has explained and uh, elaborated very uh, uh, very nicely that ki what happened in that and what the chemical and how the factory was working and what uh, miss happened there this was the uh, her presentation and it was very nice uh, for the young scholars and students uh, and uh, other uh, the participants those who are uh, taking training in this program i congratulate and uh, i thank you very much uh, dr jyoti shivastho now next thank you so much thank you so much thank you thanks a lot thank you very much dr jyoti shivastho now uh, in, in coming to the um, this uh, uh series uh, of the lectures in the second day uh, uh, i invite to before i invite to dr al uh, halda sir uh, i just uh, want to introduce him and what are the qualities he has and he is a very first of all what i feel and what i presume that he is a very energetic 
and very enthusiast man first and then after that i uh, what i just wanted to tell you is that uh, uh, dr al haldar sir is presently working as a consultant flood monitoring cell at national institute of disaster management ministry of home affairs delhi basically he has uh, done the, his post graduation degree from uh, uh, iit khalakpur in 1985 exploration geophysics then after he has done his phd degree from vikram university ujjain madhya pradesh in 2003 during his service after the passing out the iit kharagpur he served danis international development project government of odisha bhuvneswar as a geophysicist from 18 <coughs> from 1985 to 1988 performed massive ground water exploration of fresh water in coastal belt of odisha thereafter joined remote sensing application center up lucknow as a scientist sc and elevated up the scientist sg worked on geophysical exploration of for ground water on hard rock area of bundelkhand as well as alluvial area of entire up remote sensing gis and d gps lidar and bathymetry lots lots of work done on the cadastral resources mapping for the state of uttar pradesh completed more than 38 projects sponsored by internationally and nationally state of up and other that is a very uh, good uh, activity he has done in the entire period of his uh, research it is very much uh, appreciable uh, appointed as a director of remote sensing application center up for a duration of 2 years and got supernated in uh, march 2020 he has visited many many uh, countries like france italy and switzerland for a technical programs and given uh, their um, expertise uh, to these country and taken the um, technology from there also that i very humbly invite him to kindly deliver his uh, lecture and let us be benefited thank you please sir thank you very much sir for nice introduction may i request madam to uh, off his uh, this ppt or the stage share sharing could be off madam is here madam jyoti shivasto madam jyoti shivasto she made it uh, off mute her stand just ask
सर ये क्या हो गया सर एक्चुअली मैडम को बताइए अपना पीपीटी ऑफ किया है उन्होंने ऑफ कर दिया है ये ये व्हाई इट इज सो शॉर्ट टू मी यस इट इज नॉट कमिंग एक्चुअली फिर से इसको रीस्टार्ट करके करें क्या नहीं हमको तो रीस्टार्ट करना उस लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग चल रहा है ना नहीं शुड आई डू नहीं आपको भी नहीं हो पाएगा मैडम को जस्ट वेट लेट मी ट्राई अगेन फ्रॉम देयर आल्सो or i can talk extempo no problem my ppt is visible सर बेटर प्लीज रिमूव हर सर हैं बेटर इट इज शैली बेटर यू रिमूव हर सर फ्रॉम देयर होस्ट नाउ माय पीपीटी इज विजिबल इज इट नो इट इज नॉट विजिबल यू रिमूव हर सो इट विल बी स्विच ऑफ फ्रॉम देयर एंड देन योर पीपीटी विल कम आउट बट आई एम रिमूविंग बट इट इज नॉट गोइंग Here you see this is again. She is already out. Out. Okay, but still she is she is host. Now okay, I'll talk X tempo. No problem. Slide may not be visible, but I'll talk certain points on X tempo. I hope that may help. You see my topic, dear participant. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, it is audible, but uh, due to certain problems, the slides could not be visible. so okay now i'll talk some extempo that my topic is impact of climate change on water resources as well as agriculture yesterday you have uh, heard <coughs> regarding a topic on this climate change by professor and doctor uh, pvn rao he talked broadly what is happening and what needs to be done now <coughs> before my topic start i should say that covid uh, some protocol measure for the covid 19 you know that covid is reducing but still it is not stopped so you have to be aware and you have to maintain the protocol the distance still you should maintain of course government is pressurizing for the full passenger in metro bus other thing but still you have to for the uh, safety measure you have to maintain the distance and also mask you should not of course in the metro buses everywhere they are asking that mask should be there and you have to maintain the mask all the times in the public places and when you are returning home you should wash your hand which thereafter you should apply the sanitizer and whenever sneezing and and uh, other thing then at that time that you should throw the napkin or <clears throat> the uh, tissue paper in a safety places so that it should be infected by other and you have to maintain your health properly all the times and own monitor self monitoring should be made temperature and uh, other things nowadays in the market medicines are available and medicines are there and also you should maintain the uh, you should maintain that your uh, that uh, that uh, puff in the mouth or nose all the uh, trips and major first and foremost thing that you should inoculate all those two doses and lastly the booster doses you should also take so these are the things certain things i should remind you that's why i'm uh, talking so you should maintain these things still covid is not eradicate and um, um, moved away from the environment now the climate change you know what is climate change that that it is the global and regional climate pattern not in one day effect it is a quite a long time effect is there in particular change a change apparent from the mid it is happening and is uh, visible 
from mid to late 20th century. Even nowadays, in 21st century, it is continuing onwards and attributed largely to uh, largely to the increased level of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Of course, the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, these are the main component for the uh, for the this climate change. And the fossil fuel burning is the one of the major issue that not only fossil fuel and other say coal and other products are there. These are the main contributor for the global warming. And this climate change, it is both for global warming driven by human induced emission of green gases and the resulting large scale shifts of uh, weather pattern. So, so this is causing the climate change, the greenhouse gases is affect and also as well as the fossil fuel burning is another issue that it is adding the carbon emission in the uh, atmosphere and it is causes the uh, slowly slowly the climate warmer and quite a long time so more than 30 years more than 35 years 40 years it can enhance the temperature slowly and it is happening and warming the atmosphere climate change is a long-term alteration of temperature as I'm telling, not in a sudden, a few hours or few days, but long term, maybe uh, more than 30, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years or so. Slowly, slowly, if is the temperature is rising in the atmosphere, then global warming is taking place. The cause is largely human activity, like what I'm telling repeating, uh, repeatedly, the burning of uh, fossil fuels, like natural gas, oil, and coal. These are the main inputs or impedance for the, uh, from the human activity. This burning, these materials and release greenhouse gases in the earth atmosphere. Now we should think on that. Obviously, government level and globally, it is thinking on that. And day by day, they're planning. You know that two degrees centigrade is going to be uh, enhanced in the end of this 2100. Now for that in the Paris, uh, Paris that uh, Sammelan or the meeting was there uh, three years back and we are trying to make it reduce from the two degrees centigrade to 1.5 degrees centigrade. So a lot of things could be saved due to this uh, reducing in temperature and the end what is going to happen two degrees centigrade increase and if you reduce it 1.5 degree, the lot of impact will be there and it would be pro for the human and other animals also. So we are planning and globally and it is effort is on. <clears throat> now how hot it could be, it could get and where you live. Certain countries, they have committed to make cutting carbon emission by back by the fail away short of the target in the conference. So <clears throat> this carbon emission you should reduce. And as I'm telling repeatedly, countries, different countries are trying and they have their target. They have to make it to reduce the carbon emission. And in the world, they have agreed in 2015 in Paris to avoid the worst impact of climate change by trying to limit the global temperature, which is increases to 2 degrees centigrade, and it has to fix by 1.5 degrees centigrade at all possible levels. And due to this climate change, a lot of impacts are there. That is, uh, you see, in the extreme temperature climate, hot wave, Cold wave is also that is the impact of the uh, climate change. And even in this year, 2021, enormous flood was there. Out of 27 states, 18 states were affected by flood and three Indian territories. So severe flood, even cyclones, they have been taken place. Three big, big cyclones in East Coast twice, two cyclone, big cyclone, and West Coast one, Tokte. And this, yes, one East Coast, it was there. And it has given the severe impact in the human life. Of course, casualty was less due to the 
uh, impact of this uh, uh, remote sensing and this early warning, no impact, though fatalities were less, but several miseries were there for the public, houses were damaged, obviously, and government, they were very, very busy and a lot of money they have put to reduce the fat, uh, fatalities and government machinery was very busy for when they learned that uh, say yes is coming Takti is coming and they are busy for the alarming and to save the people in the coast coastal area especially the area in the uh, in Odisha in Dhamra it was fallen the yes and that was uh, I mean that uh, waves in the sea it was there more than uh, five meter or so even up to the coconut tree that much height that much height the waves were going and so all these are responsible due to the climate change of course temperature is enhancing one places yesterday dr rao he was explaining in the last discussing the temperature is there in one place but its impact is happening in other places so you do not know but we have to reduce the climate change the global warming it should be we have to manage it we have to maintain it then and that it will be happening so due to the climate change that you have seen in 2020 uh, and 2021 in in february that was the cloud burst as well as this uh, uh, as well as this uh, uh, glough glacial lake outburst was there in uttarakhand that two factory in ntpc factory that is washed away a lot of laborers they are working and that has and a lot of lives has been smashed in that event so all those events are due to the climate change effect and global warming effects expert says the increase in number of heavy rains events in many parts of the country is directly linked this is the expert says that this is that this is these are having direct link in the climate change so we should be very, very cautious. We should put our hand and we should join our hand to, to uh, mitigate or to reduce the climate change or the global warming. Everybody should try on that. Now, global situation, the food and water, these are the vital things for the mankind and animals to survive. Now, this is due to the global situation uh, at present, they are globally it is ensure and they are having plenty of food to manage in 2010 and 12 almost 870 million people are estimated to be under nourished and malnourished that is how that is food and agriculture organization of united nation they have estimated in addition that another 1 billion people are malnourished so this was the statistics in 2010 and 12 but the paradox the paradox is that concomitantly a large number of people mainly in richer countries they are worrying but in poor country they are having lacking of food but overall in globally we are having enough food to maintain that but some of the people they are eating overly and of course they are facing the problem still they are using say the poor farmers the farmers who are cultivating the food grains so they are thinking that is the basic need food is not the only the basic need to survive and but it is the single and often friable and support for maintaining livelihood the food is there to maintaining livelihood it is there they are obviously and to sustain the life they are taking the food now what is true at the household level is also true at the macroeconomic level. In out of 32 countries, 20 countries, mostly in Africa based, they are facing food crisis and in need of international emergency support in these countries, that agriculture is not important source of employment. So this is the thing we should consider and we should put our opinion on that this is a vital issue for that. Now, what is the objective? The objective is to create awareness 
the impact of climate change in agriculture. It need to make sure enough food is accessible for everyone so that people will be survived properly and they'll be easy for the food, they'll be easy for the drinking water. Between now and 2050, and we are expecting the population will be increased one third of present status. So it means that 2 billion people uh, will live, additional 2 billion people will become, uh, or say for the 2 billion people, and we have to think for the food and fiber and water in the countries. And for the, the most of the people, they're living in the cities where a lot of crises are there, but FAO, that is Food and Agriculture Organization, estimated, estimates the production will have to increase at least 60% by 2050. Now, how it is possible if this global uh, warming or this, uh, or this uh, climate change is the constant for that? So goal is to achieve by provided entire agriculture sector is moved to adapt climate start as climate smart agriculture practices. Now we have to live within these things. We have to manage within this situation. So we have to adapt climate smart agriculture and smart agriculture practices for that. <clears throat> now agriculture is the cultivation in all forms of life existence plants, animals, and other life forms, as well as products of for food, fiber, energy. Other purpose is to is in order to satisfy man's need, sustain, and enhance human life. All are depending on the food. Nearly 70% of the people in developing countries, they live in rural places. But of course, in rural places, we have to think to produce more food or more agriculture production, we have to believe on that. And climatic variables like temperature, radiation, precipitation, humidity, all are direct impact on productivity of agriculture. All those uh, things, that is temperature enhancement, radiance, radiation increasing, precipitation, and humidity, these are having direct impact on the productivity of agriculture, forestry, as well as fisheries. So we have to think on that. Now the climate and atmospheric condition determine the vegetative growth due to those things, that is temperature enhancement, radiation, these are uh, mainly controlling the vegetative growth and animal production and the development implying agricultural production. So now the changes in cool region they will absorb or they will manage the potential for increasing food production with the rise of little temperature, say one degree to three degree. But what about other places? They cannot digest. So, so uh, even though the agricultural productivity is projected to decrease a small temperature, increases one to two degree. Now, what is happening? Now we have to adopt the globally smart agriculture. Now, the agriculture is not only the victim, but also a cause of climate change. It releases and absorbs greenhouse. Of course, in the field of agriculture, whatever uh, greenhouse gases they are uh, em emitting, and in the same way, they need some more carbon dioxide So uh, for the agricultural production. So it is balancing in the agriculture field, but in other places, it is not. So you have to balance ourselves apart from the agriculture issues. Now the agriculture that the main impacts on climate change are the rainfall pattern, glacial melt. Then whenever glacial melt are there, that in the river as well as sea, water level is increasing and sea level is rising. You know that near seashore or nearby places, most of the people they are managing the food for the public. So if the sea level will rise, those one third area in geophysical way, it was derived that one third of the population who are living in the seashore or nearby, they're producing food for the mankind. So those will be submerged. 
so that another point will come to uh, to the food security or the food production will be reduced so and the loss of ecosystem and natural resource base, uh, base coupled with inappropriate change in land use pattern which is known to aggravate livelihood challenges resulting into poverty inequality and socio economic disparity so this is the great concern we have to think on that due to the climate change this will be the impact direct impact on the ecosystem now the climate change it will affect the food what i was telling repeatedly and water security in complex ways it impacts crop livestock forestry fisheries and aquaculture and cause a grave a social and economic uh, consequences in the form of reduced income eroded livelihood and trade disruption and adverse health impact so these are the serious thing is going to be happen now direct impact or effect on climate change due to that is the rising of maximum temperature and minimum temperature in a due, in this winter season the maximum temperature was very very less and also minimum temperature obviously it was less so severe cold faces in northern india and not only in northern but in central india also now this climate change it will give the impact of rising of maximum temperature and parallelly the rising of minimum temperature and it will be have serious impact on the uh, public and similarly the sea level rise will be there and higher ocean temperature this uh, ocean will be facing or it will absorb the higher temperature uh, and for that that lot of things that is the acid, uh, acidity will be in place nearby the sea shore and increase in heavy precipitation obviously that due to this thing that you know that uh, increase of 0.5 degree centigrade in uh, atmosphere that will create that due to this 0.5 degree only temperature increase it will create at least 30% more moisture in the cloud so that will reflect so not in the same day but next day or after that that rainfall or the moisture will give will fall somewhere and it will give the <coughs> it will give the impact of flash flood or the flash rain in certain places what we are facing in mumbai what we are facing in kerala these are the accumulation of uh, more moisture in the cloud and it is happening and same phenomena due to the cloud burst it was taken place in this uttarakhand that's why this uh, uh, glof taken place and it was the fatalities for the mankind in different states now due to this uh, uh, direct effect of uh, climate change the sinkage of glacier it will be there that whatever glaciers are there the inventories are doing by uh, gsi uh, gsi and other uh, institutes they are doing the glacier inventory that due to the sinkage of the glacier it will be taking place and number of glacier will be reduced the potential impact for three types of climate change scenario the the progressive uh, climate change it will give the impact of irregular there is a high variability and over short term and increment uh, incrementally significant over long term and in the mean temperature and rainfall amount and changes in length of growing season the growing season season or the productivity of the uh, crop it will be lengthier season and it will be having severe impact now the extreme event that is the more severe for foods destructive in wind storm drought will be quite prevalent and significant over long term the food productivity everything will take more time for that and already it is observed the increased frequency ex, uh, it is expected that whatever drought was there that frequency will be more 
and likely for certain geographic profiles, lower elevation and coastal areas. So this will be the quite prevalent in these phenomena. And the third, that is the threshold event or tipping points, that is the negative synergies with multi-system failures and probability pro uh, profile is the unprecedented or high impact on mankind and animals of that. Now, what are the impacts that due to the progressive climate change, loss of coastal habitats, and it reduces some food production activities. And then another is that the increased rainfall variability leads to decrease in water resources. The rainfall in certain places, it will be reduced. And obviously that will uh, give the impact of the decreasing in water resources in certain places, in certain location. And it will give the impact of decreasing irrigation potential. In that irrigation is the main source for food production and that will give the negative impact. And this increasing temperature in many location to more demand of water for irrigation, obviously if uh, temperature is increasing, water for irrigation, it needs more and the migration effect, it will be quite prevalent. The people will be migrated for their livelihood and other places. And this increased conflict, uh, conflicts due to the resource complete, completion. And the resource will be reduces, that's why the conflict will be more. The increasing temperature leads to heat uh, stress on animals and mammals and, and, uh, and for the humans. So that will give the impact on the mortality and fertility also. This is the impact for the progressive climate change. Now, the, if the extreme event will come, now you think on that, what is the progressive impact? Climate change, what was the impact? That will be more than that. The heat-related deaths will be more due to the heat wave. And death and injury, that is due to the flood, fire. Fire will be, forest fire and other fire will be quite prevalent in these extreme event cases and storm will be taking place. Now the spread of infectious disease, if the temperature will be more in this extreme event, the insects or disease will be most common and most uh, post event of the flood. And the spread of pest will be more due to the, this extreme events. The loss of cultivable land, that cultivable land will be reduced a loss of water resources, that is the drought, due to the drought, the water resources, whatever is there, and whatever the contingent plan you are make, you are planning, or the government, state government and central government, they are planning for the contingent plan, but that will be insufficient for the habitants or for the public. And the heat-related stresses, that will reduce the uh, cattle uh, reproduction and increase death. So these are the extreme event phenomena. Now you think the next stage, that is the threshold event or the tipping points that causes will be the epidemic for the cattle and human crop failure. Obviously the threshold event crop failure will be there because the uh, very, the climate will be changing, will be severe and temperature will be more, the crop failures will be there broad ecosystem collapses the ecosystem that obviously due to the extreme event that it has it will be collapsed and severe effect impact will be there economic crash due to the systematic and multi-system spiraling event massive out migration will be taking place that earlier poor left left the place but in this threshold event all people will be trying to migrate wherever they will see the uh, livelihoods will be there or the income can generate and food will be available. The migration will be taking place in those places, in those areas. Now, what are the scenario? Now for this climate change, I should repeat or I should tell few words in hydrologic, hydrologic cycle. 
<clears throat> due to the present uh, scenario, there's climate change, somewhere less precipitation and somewhere it will be more precipitation. That is the greater annual variable it will be there. And this more rain or less rain, and this will give the impact of less snow and snow, snow mate will be there in sooner in spring. Before the spring arises, the snow melt taking place and the glaciers will be reduced for this variability or hydraulic change, a hydrologic change and increased in high elevation erosion. The high elevation erosion where the snows are there, all will be eroded. And the increased reliance on groundwater for basic supply. That surface water is dried up, they all will depend on the groundwater. But al almost in the cities and uh, mega cities, they are stressed in groundwater, but the global warming that will be further uh, stress will be on the groundwater. Earlier spring runoff, larger uh, flood peaks, less summer stream flow, and a smaller head, either a head uh, water steam network. So whatever impacts will be there, that was due to the climate change, all these things. And then water in the streams, it will be getting uh, uh, warm and becomes uh, less in the uh, after the monsoon. And sea level will rise, more coastal erosion, the salt water intrusion in the nearby area. And obviously acidification will taking place more evapotranspiration will be taking place in the hydrogeologic cycle, drier vegetation and soil, the soil will be drier and vegetation will be, and will be less, more frequent and severe droughts will be taking place. More intense storm with more flooding and, uh, and severe and extreme winds will be taking place. These are the hydrologic, hydrologic change in the scenario. Now, potential climate change impacts water. There is a more evaporation will be taking place in the water. Heavier rain and snowstorm will be there. Increase in one winter flooding. What has taken place in the last uh, in the Uttarakhand in last 2021 February, and less snowpack will be there, and lower summer stream flow, increased stream and lake temperature, and increased risk due to aquatic ecosystem and fish species. These will be the potential impact on the water. Similarly, for the uh, climate change that it will impact on water resources, drought, flood, uh, water supply shortage, poor water quality, obviously due to the drought or due to the temperature rise, that water quality will be very, very inferior and it will disturb the water shed processing. The water shed generally, it gives the healthier, uh, uh, healthier system in the environment, but this global, uh, this global uh, climate change or the climate change or the global warming, it will disrupt the watershed process and greater carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Overall, it will increase the risk, problems, and and at at various uh, stakeholders. Now, the longer and warmer growing season will be there, warming surface water will be there, intense drought will be there. These are the impact on the water uh, sector. Now, for the similarly, I should say a few words for the uh, potential climate change impacts on agriculture. The agriculture, it will be climate change can add or can affect agriculture in variety of ways beyond certain range of temperature. Warming tends to reduce yield. Obviously, if the temperature will be increasing, uh, uh, yield will be reduced because of crops uh, speed through their development and producing less grain in the process. Longer and warmer growing season will be there. So these will be the great impact and, and uh, the <coughs> soil will be drier. Now we have to think for the Agriculture smart, that is the Sorosan uh, <clears throat> Sorosan system. We have to promote. We have to expand urban farming. We have to lift uh, irrigation system or the efficiency irrigation system. We have to adopt and improved 
the crop production or the varieties has to be added. In this sorogen system, that is the sink or the elevated area that uh, increase the production per unit in the land area and the crop diversification should be there and growing of high value or off season crops we have to add and simultaneously growing of wide varieties of lowland and upland crops that will assure farmers a good uh, harvest in during that off season or during that uh, climate change scenario and it will increase the fodder production and livestock. So this is the uh, in the Sarojan uh, cultivation system or the system, it will have the some plus point. And earlier rice crops and higher yields of parsley irrigated or rain fed areas that Sarojan system can have uh, this plus point and other benefits will also be added in the Sarojan system. Now the agriculture adaptation, uh, we have to improve the crop for drought resistance. The whatever food are there or the uh, agriculture is there, the drought resistance crop we have to identify. We have to study uh, land suitability for crop choices and we have to select the best crop for suitable land. We have to prompt, promote the crop rotation and the rotation of crop has to be adapted and water conservation has to be taken place. The plant shorter rotation crop has to be taken place. Now, in certain varieties, the crops due to the flood that it will be a problem, then we have to adapt some other that uh, varieties of uh, crop that are more resistance for water. Similarly, for the drought resistance, in the drought resistance, whatever uh, production is there in the crop, we have to change for the dry season and that uh, which are resistance for the drought. We have to think on that due to, I could not show the uh, slide. Otherwise, the figures could have been shown to you. You have been motivated for that, for the good cultivation or the smart cultiv uh, agriculture product. Similarly, in the drought, that certain uh, species or the certain crops has to be changed, which are, which are suitable for the new crop or the food or production for that. And also the area which are more prone to flood, there we have to cropping has to be changed in different other places and uh, the uh, fisheries has to be developed. And similarly, for the uh, ecotourism, that some places that which are, which are, uh, which are drought resistance, that has to be built for the ecotourism purposes. So now another due to this uh, climate change or global warming, that soil loss will be there, that the nutrient will be having negative impact or nutrient will be dried up and due to this frequent flood and frequent drought, this out migration of natural resources dependent, that it will be reduction in soil fertility and increase in temperature likely to reduce soil moisture and moisture, it will damage the productivity as well as the agriculture crops. Low livestock productivity and high uh, reproduction cost, the climate change will affect livestock productivity. Now, only two or three slides are there. The IPCC, Intercontinental Panel for Climate Change, they have given their recommendation or they have disclosed the impact, increase the temperature and reduce precipitation resulting from climate change and could lead to overall reduction in agriculture, productivity and yields, it including the uh, range land or the grazing land and livestock production and it will threatening the food security and heightening the risk of future. The illness will be enhanced due to that thing and ill no effect will be increasing due to this climate change and it is proved that the increased temperature and elevated carbon dioxide 
level can reduce the nutrient density in some staple crops, which is a particular concern for low income countries. Now the climate resilient crops has to be adopted. What I was showing, but it, uh, due to the non-visibility um, that I could not manage, the resilient crops varieties are there. Millets are considered that the nutri cereals, those could be adopted in certain areas. Reach diversity with uh, small millet crops, and that is a contingency crop for planning. You have to arrange for the climate change for the balanced food or the balanced diet. Now, to can we stop the climate change? Yes, that result, we can act for that. We can reduce that short-lived climate pollutants can have immediate economic benefits. Also, uh, lasting ancillary benefits from the improved public health, reduce poverty, inequality, and lessen climate change. This is required for that. How we solve the climate change? We can adopt or we can stop global warming. We cannot do it overnight, but for the longer plan, all countries has to adapt. Each and every uh, population or public should join the program. How to reduce climate change? That is the mitigation efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emission. And we have to adopt the varieties of food and capacity to cope with the changes climate. Greenhouse a geoengineering or earth manipulation, additional and deliberate intervention of earth, those could be stopped. Now, this, these are from my side for the greenhouse, uh, for the this, how the climate change and global warming could be tackled. These are the from my side. Now, thank you very much for the patient hearing. So we have to think for the future and we have to stop the climate change how it could be managed. Thanks for kind attention. Now over to you, Swasta Sab, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Haldar. It was a very nice presentation. Uh, your lecture was very nice on climatic changes and uh, its impact on water resources and agriculture. This uh, You have shown the uh, clear picture of that, what is going on and what is the scenario now and what can be done and what to be there that uh, impacts there and uh, what the researchers further what they can do further you have given me also some 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 ideas uh, i have noted a few uh, your your points that he, how uh, i will guide to my research scholars it was a very impactful the knowledgeful lecture and this is the your experience of long long service in very variety of work and in a different areas in which you have worked through the gis remote sensing and the latest technology that was the very nice and i really congratulate and appreciate thank you very much sir and uh, it, they definitely this lecture will be benefited to the all participants and research scholars and uh, students those who are uh, joining this uh, training program thanks very lot sir thanks very I, very will, nice. I, so, 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 I will to get my slide to be visible for the uh, participant so it is yeah i hope now it is visible yes sir yes sir yes sir so very this, nice these sir. are the key takeaways for the participant Sir, I request very humbly that this uh, this presentation and this slides should be also provided to the participants also, so they, so they may also do some work uh, in this field also. Your expertise and your experience is, uh, that is valuable, sir. That is, yes, uh, yes, that yes. is uh, whatever you experience in the different area through the uh, GIS and remote sensing, that is more uh, important, sir. So is there. Please, but, uh, please, I am authorizing, so I have to give chance for the others. And currently, I am also taking class. And not only for this climate change, I am taking class for remote sensing GIS. I am taking class. I understand. So all the time to time, this theme I am taking. But this time, I was bound to take for the climate change. Uh, and whenever the themes are there, for me, for the remote sensing GIS, 
I'm taking classes for the specific for the high resolution satellite data, how, how it could be used for the disaster purposes, how it could be used for the land record purposes I'm using. Now, uh, it is a beautiful suggestion for you. <laughs> that is obviously, I could, uh, I, could, uh, I could appreciate that your ideas. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Over to the host. Thank you, sir. Okay. Today we'll be closing this season. I'm sorry that I could not manage my slide to show you. Finally, I could get it, but not at the right time. But of course, I'll be in uh, I'll be uh, available for other time for this lecture also. And thank you, participants, that you have taken the uh, pain uh, only extent for hearing. Now we'll leave the event today. Again, we'll be joining. So the new uh, pool of energy in tomorrow morning. Thank you. So Mr. Saab, bye bye. Now tomorrow again we'll meet. Yes, sir. Thank you very much and goodbye. Uh, not goodbye. I have to say good day. Uh, bye. Uh, okay, okay. Tomorrow okay, the day sir. will come to say that. Uh, good day, sir. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Okay, sir. Bye bye.